Welcome to Screen Riot, the show where we let fate choose the movie we review. This week's movie is 2011's The Skin I Live In. Obviously, this episode will contain major spoilers, so if you don't have the movie, it's available to rent or buy on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Prime, and more for $2.99. Go check it out and come back to the podcast, because this is Screen Riot. Welcome back to another great episode of Screen Riots. In the opening, you heard Eddie talk about the movie that he got to choose <laughs> with the wild card genre. And I just want to say real quick, um, if you haven't watched the movie yet, uh, don't watch it with uh, children around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this, um, Please don't. Yeah, this movie is out there. Yeah. It's um, it's rated R. It's from 2011. It stars uh, Antonio Banderas, um, Elena... And Anya and Jan Cornet, Cornet, I'm not sure how to pronounce those names, um, but it's uh, all in Spanish. Um, it's subtitled and all. Um, yeah, which I'm, I'm fine with. Yeah, I'm fine with that because I mean I, I enjoy Narcos. Yeah, Narcos is one of my so, favorite. I mean, it, it's it shows. pretty much all in Spanish, so it's very authentic. And I get uh, this was in Spain, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it makes so sense for all Portuguese. Of it to be, then. Yeah, and all it, it all makes sense to be Spanish. Or Portuguese, whatever it is. Yeah. So a quick synopsis of this is um, a brilliant plastic surgeon haunted by past tragedies. (laughs) (laughs) Just just knowing just knowing the movie. Yes. Yeah, that it makes me laugh. It Um, it is pretty brilliant, that's for sure. uh, Creates a type of synthetic skin that withstands any kind of damage. His guinea pig, a mysterious and volatile woman who holds the key to his obsession. Mm Mm-hmm. Holds the key. So here's a question: how how quickly do we want to jump into this movie? No, I I, I want to know. Yep. <laughs> why you decided on this movie for Wild Card? Yeah, that's what. Good I question. Want. Elaborate. Because uh, I think this movie is interesting. I think it's it's, it's like interesting. it's like four or five movies layered on top of each other. Mm-hmm. And, and and when I say that, I don't mean like it's confusing. To me, it's very straightforward and mm-hmm. it's it's very clear what's happening. But it's four different types of movies put on top of each other because you've got like the mad scientist movie happening you've got like a frankenstein mad scientist thing happening mm-hmm. you have a love story that's taking place you have an unnatural love story that's taking place you have a revenge story that's fucking awesome that's true that's probably one of the all-time best revenge stories i've ever seen like you have all these great stories and they're all layered on top of each other in a way that's pretty damn smooth like i think it's to me pedro Almodovar, who's the uh, director Over, yeah. is probably one of the i mean he's one of the better directors um i think currently alive in the, in the world and this movie to me is is uh i mean it's definitely different like when you watch it like if you watch it all the way through i don't think you can go oh i've seen this <laughs> i don't think you i don't think you have that i don't no. think you can point to another movie that does this yeah that's true um did anybody see this was my first time watching it and i'm assuming as kyle definitely and john as well. time yes. did anybody yeah. see the major twist coming no no i didn't no. either I didn't um, see it. I did. I did see little hints of well, yeah, things that were happening because yeah. I, I think you're supposed to. Yes. Like for yeah. instance, when he puts uh, Vicente on the operating table, one of the first things I said, I, I watched the movie with somebody. Probably yeah. not a good idea, but I did, uh, not knowing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I remember saying, it I was remember a consenting s- adult. Yes, sure, it was a consenting. Uh, I remember saying to him, "I was like, oh God, he's gonna cut his junk off." Mm-hmm. You know, I, I did actually say that too, uh, and I was like, "Yeah, okay, I get it. He was the he was the rapist, you know, yeah. type thing." And I'm like, "Oh, it's perfect. He's gonna, you know, cut his dick off. Mm-hmm. Perfect." And and I thought that's where it would stop. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. It was, I didn't know it was gonna turn into a vaginoplasty or whatever it's yeah, called. Uh, yeah, 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 vagina, yeah. Vagin, yeah vag, whatever. How you pronounce it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, that was. I was like, huh, what? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> what now? And say what? <laughs> and when this happened, it was actually a flashback. Uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. what you had seen before of this, you know, naked woman on the couch or on the on the on the bed when he's coming home or whatnot, yep. and you know, spending all this time, and I'm like, okay, it's, he's just you know waiting for like Stockholm syndrome to yeah Stockholm Stockholm, Stockholm syndrome, syndrome yeah. to, to activate. You yeah, know? he just seems like well, and, and that's okay. So that's the mm-hmm. interesting part about this movie too, to me. Is that I want you to tell me who the antagonist is? Ugh. It's well, really, it's really hard to point out. Well, I mean, I you, I guess you could argue that it would be Antonio Banderas's character. You could, yeah. 
How would, how would you get there? How do you get that he's the antagonist? Because if you think about it, let me ask you this real fast. He's a father mm-hmm. who decided to avenge the death of his daughter and the rape of his daughter right. by attacking this guy. Most dads would say that's okay. Yeah, I mean... Uh, don't get me wrong. Not legally, by the way. I mean morally. Right, I was going yeah, yeah, to say <laughs> yeah. morally, yes. Morally. But... So, so you end up... Okay, so is he really the antagonist? Then you have Vicente. Or or Vera Cruz, if we're gonna call her that. Oh, by the way, spoiler alerts. Uh, yeah, he gave he gave him a sex change and then decided to have his way with <laughs> with yeah. him essentially. Which, like you said at the top, it's probably the most um, uh, hardcore yeah, uh, revenge like, story. That, oh yeah, that yeah. I've ever seen. And and to me, I think Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, happened. But yeah. then also the Florence Nightingale. Yeah, S- syndrome it, happens. Yes. And I, I, I don't think Stockholm syndrome a- actually ever took place. A hundred percent. No, it what, didn't. I, Not a hundred percent. It started to. It started. It to, did yeah. start to. Well, that's that's what I think Antonio Banderas was hoping for. No, he wasn't. What? No, I, I think I think that he Ow. spent so much time. Yep. With this person, turning him into turning his him wife. into into a, a woman. Well, that, his wife in particular. The the, the actress who plays yeah. Vera Cruz is his wife, his dead wife. Right. So he actually took, basically, he shaped Vince, Vicente's face mm-hmm. into his dead wife's face, yeah, right. he which was wife the, back. which was a mistake. When that took place, it left the the character open. It left Vera Cruz open for Antonio Banderas to almost have this emotional attachment to the face, and that started to bring his dead wife back to life. Right, right. That's the which that's the mistake that took he place. He would want her or Vincent to stay back with him. Yes. Well, yeah. Because so he was his wife. wife. So yeah. he was wanting the Stockholm syndrome to work. Well, uh, yeah. Okay. To a degree. But he didn't know that yet. Antonio Banderas hadn't gotten there yet. Until Antonio Banderas shoots Zika, Zika, whatever his name is, Zika. Until he shoots him and and stops all of that from taking place. Yeah. He doesn't even realize how he feels about Vera. Well, he was a little late to that party, but yes. But he doesn't even. <laughs> but he doesn't yeah. even know how he feels about it. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. So, so until <clears throat> that takes place in his mind. She's been a science experiment. She's been, um, yeah, she's he, been whatever. The, the it's been a guinea pig. <laughs> yeah, it was, well, and it and it was a rapist, somebody who raped his daughter yes. and was the co- the cause of his daughter's death. So in his mind, this is just fair game. I'm just going to use this person, and it's not even a person to me. Sure, you know what I mean. And then feel he he caught feelings. He caught feelings. <laughs> That's what took place. <laughs> Yikes! It's I know it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, he he definitely. Um, God, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> well, no, but no. In, in all seriousness, I mean, it's back to like, well, who's the antagonist? Is it is it Antonio Banderas, this grieving father and and you know and uh, plastic surgeon, or is it you know Vincente, the the uh, what, what do you want to call it, the the rapist with a with a heart of gold? I mean, which, yeah, I don't. Like, I do don't you... <laughs> think he actually raped her. Well, see, I was going to bring that up too. I, I it's a gray area. I, I I don't I don't believe he he did because she started freaking out. Like, like, let, let, let's put to put it in perspective. In in the movie, yeah, they're at a wedding. Yep, and for some reason, Antonio Banderas goes outside. I don't. He's I, looking for his daughter. I, he's looking for his daughter. Okay, yeah. he's looking for the daughter. Well, there's a this orgy going on in the gardens of this yes of this uh, venue. Yeah, and the daughter goes out with Vicente. Vicente. Yep, and she's obviously taking some kind of drug. Well, so and she starts freaking out a lot. So here's the problem. Remember, she's in a psychiatric ward that they let her she go was. out. Yes. So she was in a psychiatric ward, and the drug that she's on is or mood enhancers. It's happy right. pills. She's on happy pills. So right. she gets out there, and in her mind, you can tell on her face before it actually starts happening, she's not really feeling it. But she, she does. She's not really with it. She's really. not a hundred percent with it. So she's mm-hmm. like okay, and kind of goes with it. She never actually says okay. If you right. actually watch it, she never says okay. So she goes with it. And then Vicente is doing his deal, and then she starts saying no, and instead of him stopping, he continues on and then punches her in the face and knocks her out. Yeah. So it's really dependent upon your view of rape. Yeah. Is, is rape consent? Does, does consent for rape have to happen beforehand, and then it's good for the entire sexual encounter, or does consent for rape can, can consent for rape re, be retracted at any point during the sexual encounter? I missed that she said no. I, I, I didn't realize. Oh she yeah, said she no. started, I just thought she started too. screaming. Yeah, well, well she said no. That's kind of a, yeah. 
<laughs> and he stopped at that point. Right. Yeah, I mean, he, he he slapped her to shut her up. Yeah. You know, because she wouldn't be quiet because yeah. he stopped and he's like, stop, stop, stop. She well, just no. wouldn't stop screaming. And let me say. <laughs> I'm not saying it's okay. No, you I'm sound not like, saying it's okay. You sound like, what's his name but, in Clue? You sound like the guy yeah. in Clue. Like, I had to stop her from screaming. <laughs> <Mr. Green. laughs> yeah. I had to stop her screaming. Yeah. I mean, that's that makes total sense. But uh, And remember, he even says. Um, after his, uh, after his manhood was yeah. done. Um, he's like, I don't think I did that. Yeah, he's like, I yeah. don't even think I put it's it a, in. It's a something. gray area, and it actually yeah. does leave open the window for Vicente isn't actually the antagonist. So, I mean, it really does right. come down to your perspective on it. I mean, like, it's it's hard to say who really is at fault. And, I think and, Robert Ludgard is, but it's hard to say that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. And the um, some of the reason that I say that is because I obviously have never seen the film. But uh, you mean before the first time you saw it, like you've watched it? Once I've, now. Yes, I have watched okay. it now. You're like, I've never seen the film. Here <laughs> yeah. I go. I'm talking about. It. Yeah, I'm gonna criticize. <laughs> I'm gonna critique this film I've never seen. Yeah, I watched it blindfolded. Perfect. With my ears plugged. It's probably the way to watch this one. Actually. Um, right. Yeah. Um, pretty much. It was based <laughs> on a novel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle, so sorry. You guys can't see us, but Kyle's face. <laughs> Shock and awe, <laughs> just right. all the whole time. Wow, he looks like he's shell shocked. <laughs> poor guy. It did, poor, it did, poor innocent Kyle. It did kind of have that because I wasn't really, I wasn't really prepared mentally for that type of twist. That was purposeful. I happen. didn't want to prepare you guys. I was like, I, okay, okay. I did tell you guys often though. I was like, it's you're gonna want to watch it probably more than once because you're gonna miss some things. It's it's deep. Well, since you picked the movie, you've been like like every. Half a day. You guys put have it you watched off. it yet? Have you, you watched put, it yet? You put it off. Have you watched it yet? Tell me when you watch it. Yeah. You have to tell me when you watch it. I usually, I usually, <laughs> I like, knew there was something. I mean, I, I usually try to. I, I give every movie one shot. Okay. That's that's how I'm going to take this whole you know podcast thing. Is okay. I, I'm not going to watch it so hard and so much. <laughs> Yeah. That is such a weird, That's like a bad the, choice yeah. of words for this film. But like you're gonna <laughs> pretend, like you're gonna pretend that orifice is what you breathe through. <laughs> Ew, okay, that's just that's just bad. I, okay, so I, I give I give every movie like one shot. Yeah, and it's like you know, do you impress me or do you not? You know, mm-hmm. and then that's what I make my score. And I don't want to watch it so many times that where I I am forcefully starting to pick it apart. Okay, I don't like to I don't like to necessarily pick apart movies just because. Okay, yeah. You know, so that's but yeah I and I. Probably won't recommend this to anybody. Oh, see, oh, I, see, I would, I would recommend. I would it. definitely yeah. recommend. I don't it know. Just, yeah. If if you want, if if somebody's like, hey, do you want us? Uh, give me a movie that's got a psychotic uh, person that changes sexes. Okay. Well, let me ask well, you this. It, it, go ahead, Justin. Well, I was yeah. just say, how often do people ask you that? That's question. the only time. That well, no, if if I was just, it's like Justin, you know. Uh, recommending an animated movie he's like i don't watch animated movies true but if but if i was to say like do you have like a really good revenge story this is probably one of the best revenge stories i've ever seen the patriot no <laughs> i don't know hell yeah the patriot's pretty good <laughs> yeah it's a pretty I, decent revenge story not many people see it as a revenge story right. but i'm with you <laughs> oh, but no, I, I, yeah i see it as a revenge but i think it's pretty good but what were you saying about the book <laughs> yeah it's based on Sorry, a, yeah. it's based on a novel um by uh theory junket okay called Miguel. And Miguel is a tropical spider, which is what the uh, Vicente character calls the Robert character in the book. Okay, makes sense. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's the 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 novel is the same mm-hmm. but different. Okay, which <laughs> so, happens, yeah, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, but I mean, it the the book i i would I would highly recommend. I didn't read it, but I read a a full synopsis of it. Yeah, and. I was I was like holy crap this looks like a really interesting how do you, book. Interesting, how do you spell it um M Y G A L E okay so Magali or something Magali. yeah yeah it's it's pronounced okay. I ran it through the uh the the English to French so it's Miguel it, yeah it's Miguel. Okay. Miguel. Miguel 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 so in terms of this movie by the way and and talking about again who the antagonist is you also have um the the mom Maria, Marilia, Marilia, Marilia. Yeah. Um, who's Zika's mom. And then we find out later is actually also Robert's mom. Yeah. Right. And Which I'm kind of bummed that they never actually found out their brothers. Yeah. No, he killed his brother instead. I know. Um, but she's also, <laughs> she's also, I mean, in my mind anyway, kind of culpable for this whole thing. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, cause she allows, I mean, she allows for a lot of stuff to happen, but then you also have, you know, the fact that that she's basically helping like once she realizes what's going on with with uh, Vera or Vicente whatever you want to say 
Um, she doesn't stop him. No, she becomes an accomplice. She becomes an accomplice in the whole thing. Yeah. But you yeah. know what's interesting? You saying that she's uh, allowed a lot of this stuff to happen. One of the thoughts that went to my mind was after we found out that uh, that Vin- Vincente was Vera, whatever, vice versa. Yep. Uh, I went back, started going back through the beginning of the movie, and was like and trying to look at the signs. Like, were there signs of that? Um, and and my original thought was, oh, he already knows that they're brothers. And he or or they knew each other somehow, and he got him to rape her. Yeah, you know he hired him to rape her or something like. That's an interesting thought, but like you some, do know, like he raped but, his daughter. But you did recognize what happened with the whole thing, right? Like what ended up happening with Zika, why Zika was there, and why he was raping Vera again. Well, because he he was involved with his wife. Yeah, right. yeah, they, they had a fling. Yes, yeah. That well, it was more well, than a fling. Well, well I, I thought it was like, all yeah. together. Like he. He, I thought he was going to make it look like he was defending her by killing his brother for revenge of his wife. He was doing a, a twofer. Oh, okay. that's oh, that's oh, what oh, I thought oh, it was yeah. going gotcha. to. So he actually finally kind of got to to save his wife in a way. Yeah, yeah, ah. yeah. Because yeah, his I wife, his wife was leaving with Zika, <clears throat> and right. they had that car accident, and his wife got horribly burned. Yeah, and then she he, ended up killing herself. He ran away. <laughs> yeah, he ran away. He didn't even save her. Right. And then, uh, yeah, and then. Um, Antonio Banderas, Robert Robert, ends up saving his wife, who then is horribly disfigured, and she can't live with the shame of it. She catches a reflection of herself in the window and throws herself out the window, and her daughter watches it happen, which is why she ends up in the psychiatric hospital. Right. The, the intricacy, by the way, of this story is fucking intense. Like, it, there's, there's such small, like, the chance of this happening, and then this happening, and then this leading to that, and then that leading to that, and then, oh, by the way, Zika, who's been gone for, what, six years? Six years. Six years yeah, years, yeah. So he's going to be gone for six years. He's coming back. No, it was more than that. It was ten years. Yeah, it was ten, 10 years. My yeah. bad. Six years since um, Vicente, since Antonio Bendez has had Vincent, Vicente, but Zika's going to come back and see Vera and think that it's the dead wife because Antonio Banderas basically gave Vicente his dead wife's face. I mean, just all of that is just such a like, oh my god, like it's just a, it's a horrible, it's a perfect storm of exactly what you wouldn't want to happen in a trans a forced transsexual situation. <laughs> <laughs> It's everything well, you ever wanted in it, <laughs> and uh, and I'm telling you, uh, Zika, 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 yeah, something like that, yeah, freaked me the hell out. The lion or with tiger that tiger guy. suit, yeah. I, I mean, think, I, I think that was it, it was actually better for that to for Zika to actually be in that costume because he he was wild. Yes. So yeah. to actually pair it with the costume like that, and well, and you got why he was wearing it yeah, for yeah, real, yeah. right? For right. Carnival, yeah. Carnival, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I mean, it was. But you know, just yeah. all everything kind of led to him just being a, a weird beast. ass yeah. dude, yeah, yeah and he a was. beast. Yeah. He he definitely freaked me out, and <laughs> and something that 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 caught my eye, oh, unfortunately, no. ruh, ruh. was when he decides he's gonna rape, right? The yes. uh, Vera, Vera, and there's a shot going across the floor of all the of the tiger suit. Mm-hmm. And everything on the floor and all that stuff. Well, the end of the tail that attaches to the the body, not the end, but that that, that dangles that, in that mid-air. Dangles in yeah. mid-air but it, it it looks like the the head of a of a uh, toy, a, a sex toy. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm like, I rewound it. I'm like, did I just see that? And I'm like, yep, that that's the thing. Yep. That's weird. I know, right? So he was wearing a butt plug? No, it can't no. be. Well, because well, we know he wasn't because he mooned the security yeah. camera. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he no, wasn't. He but be. I mean, I, oh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm wanting to say the someone on that set just <laughs> said, you know fun. what? I'm yeah. gonna hide this this dildo. And by the way, in this thing, if you haven't seen your mother in ten years, <clears throat> why wouldn't you just say your name that that you're Zika instead of having to moon her to show your birthmark? You know what's <laughs> funny about that too is that I, I, I get the feeling that after he ran away from the burning car and all that stuff, he just, he's just been dead. Like he disappeared completely. <laughs> yeah. And she probably assumed cause he was an asshole who, you know, was a criminal and everything else. She's like, well, he was a fuck up. He's probably dead anyway. So what, that's why I think that's why he was using the birthmark to prove that it was him. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, he's got scars and stuff all over his face from the car accident and everything too. Right. So he's, he's been a little <laughs> bit disfigured. That's why he's there in the first place is for Robert to uh, change his face because he's because pl- Robert's a plastic surgeon. Well, because he's on the run for that jewelry heist. For the jewelry too. heist, yeah. yeah. Who, like a moron, everybody else in the shot's wearing a mask. And yeah, he takes him. his mask off. Yeah, <laughs> it was obviously pre-COVID. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know. This movie to me, like I said though, is so it's just so strange. There's so many things that are going on, and I love the way that Amaldivar tells us the story. Now, I will say I do have a a, a small issue with. 
how we initially find out. Cause like you go into the dream of Antonio Banderas and it says six years earlier and you get to watch the whole thing mm. and then it comes out and it goes back into Vera's dream. And it, it, it's a little cheesy that whole, like we go into his head and we come out of his head and we go into her head. It comes out of her head. Yeah. It's a little bit cheesy. That's probably my biggest critique for this movie, to be honest. Other than that, I think it's, it's, it's just watertight. Like there's so much that it feels real. It doesn't to me, it doesn't even feel like a movie half the time. Like watching Antonio Banderas, I didn't go, Oh, it's Antonio Banderas. He's acting out this part. He's got kind of a shitty, he convinced me in that movie that he was this asshole. Like he was, yeah, just, you're, you're right. Yeah. He, he did a pretty good job. And like, usually I'm not a big Antonio Banderas fan. I'm not a big, any actor fan, but, but he, I mean, I felt like I was watching a, a home video of horribleness, like mm-hmm. just the worst possible story that could happen to these people. You know, I don't know. It's pretty nuts that way. I have a, a source of confusion. Oh, I love those. I, I love I, answering those. I know, those. I know you love <laughs> mansplaining everything. No, this kidding. is like the signal, but with certain um, sexuals. Go ahead. No, no, it, it, no. I mean, I, it, I just, it it, I guarantee you, it's just because I missed something or I missed the, the uh, allegory in the scene or, or okay. whatever. It's Moby Dick. Ha ha. Go ahead. Right. Um, <laughs> what was the deal? Okay. In, in, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I tickled myself there. Well, Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, in, all, um the, all the spacers on the dress room. Sorry. <laughs> yep. In, uh, Vicente's mother's shop. Yes. Right. Okay. When he leaves, mm-hmm, these two men come in mm-hmm. and they're they're selling his one of the guy's wife's clothes. Yes. Yes. And they're like, We don't we don't take fat people clothes. Yeah. Right. What is the purpose of that scene? I don't I don't understand I, it. I, 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 ca- I, I caught that too. I'm thinking, man, what what a weird scene to yeah, yeah, happen. Like it was. What, what what does this do? To be honest with you, I don't know. I think the only thing that it does is kind of show us who they are. Like the 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 shop owner and the and the the because um, his mom and the assistant yeah I don't know yeah. what else to call her I forget her name um, I think that it kind of shows us some of who they are and shows us like what this store is about a little bit that it's yeah. not just a new clothes store that they also it's like a consignment okay. store well that okay. guy the guy who tries to sell the clothes that's the producer and the director's brother okay see I was so thinking maybe that that crossed my head was like okay I'm, I put the the director put this scene in here to get. To get these two guys in the film, yeah, it's yeah. Quite possible. For, they could have easily been part of the uh, the um, surgery crew, the the operation. Yeah, crew. you're right. Or in the wedding, or, or something. in the wedding. Right, but right. but I do think that what's interesting about it is that it shows that like these these clothes are kind of going through the store in a in a used clothes fashion or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I took it almost like okay, we're just seeing some texture for what kind of store this is. And whenever Vicente goes out later with Marilia and comes back with clothes. My assumption was that she actually went to one of those stores or went to her mom's store or his mom's store in particular, Vicente's right. mom's store. And I think that it happened because he's wearing the dress. Yeah, he bought the dress. He bought right, the dress whenever right. he was out with them. So I think that I think that's how that all links together. Gotcha. I don't know. Okay. You just came up with a second reason for me to critique it, though. So uh, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I thought that scene was odd, too, especially yeah. because this it was that guy and, and there's like a younger guy i'm assuming it was like his son yeah, it was his son yeah, okay. they, yeah the wife walked he out doesn't on say them. anything yeah so yeah but anyway yeah the wife but it seems like this is a normal ordeal for them well because he makes a comment like well yeah. when she does it this time she's yeah. gonna have to do it naked she's gonna come back naked <laughs> <laughs> without any clothes yeah. or something yeah it was a little weird i i think um i don't know maybe it's a comment it could even be a commentary on on, on modern spanish um relationships i mean who the fuck knows right, like there's yeah, there's a because yeah. if you think about most of the women in this movie most of the women in this movie are not good people like they're just not good like the daughter ha- the daughter's probably the most pure woman quote unquote in the movie that's a good person almost every other woman in the movie is not great true hmm. yeah yeah right. you know what i mean so it could be just commentary on on the nature of women in modern Spanish society or the nature of relationships in modern Sp- Spanish society. I don't know. That's that's probably very very regionalized in terms of somebody understanding that scene in terms of context. A Maldivar is not known for just throwing shit in for no reason, but mm. I can't give you a hundred percent reason for that. Hmm. Yeah, I assume there was some deeper meaning to it, but uh, it's just something I didn't connect with. Yeah, me neither. So I'm not sure. It's a good point though. Bring it up. Um, you brought up the uh, the spacer scene, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that that scene in particular was diabolical. Oh yes. yeah, that yeah. was just torture. It, it yeah. was psychological and well, mental. I, and yeah. I liked like how it, he, Antonio Banderas's face 
because he was giddy. He was excited to actually unveil this this basically uh, self torture device. Yes, <laughs> you know? he's forcing him to rape himself. Yes. Well, it's not. It's not okay. It wasn't forcing him to rape himself. It was he gave him a vagina. Yes. Right. If you don't use these spacers, the vagina skin, because on the inside, it's it'll like tacky, together. it'll fuse together. Right. And mm-hmm. then he won't have an orifice at all. In a weird way, he's actually making sure that he get, he can actually live his life as a woman. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's the it's almost the opposite of torture in, in an immediate sense. Yeah. It's more of a torture that's like, no, you're going to live your whole fucking life this way. So we're clear. You destroyed my little girl. You're going to understand what it's like to be destroyed as a as a woman forever, like being objectified as a woman, being right. Um, you know, if, if Zeke, you know, if my my uh, apparently deranged half brother that I don't know, <laughs> as my half brother decides right. to come back and rape you, you understand. You'll get to experience all of that. So it's not. I think what he's really giddy about is the fact that I mean that's just the ultimate revenge is that he lopped off his his boy bits and yeah. gave him women bits, and now he's like, and not only do you, did I do this, but you have to now care for it. Right. And here's your right. care kit. Here's mm. how you're going to take care of this. Because if you don't, well, think about it as the orifice that you get, that you breathe through. If you don't take care of this, <sighs> you'll actually die. Yeah. And it's like the way he says that in that line too, I'm like, he's going to fucking kill him. If he doesn't let, if he doesn't take care of this, if he doesn't use these spacers, he's going to kill him because he wants to be able to rape him. He wants to be able to rape him to prove a point. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's like fuck. It's such a that scene in particular. It's very twisted. It's so, it's so <laughs> twisted, but at the same time, it's so complex. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. such a com. I mean, just understand. By the way, I'm not amazed by this movie in some like sexual deviant way. Like I'm not one of these people who likes watching sexual deviants. I'm thinking about it just in terms of what an incredible. Like I'll give you a great example. The last house on the left. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, group of guys rape uh, this guy's girl uh, gr- uh, daughter. Yeah. And you don't really, he, he finally gets his um, revenge at the end of the movie. He gets all of them and he has the, the guy, uh, the head of the group, um, laying on a table, strapped to a table and he's got his head halfway hanging into a microwave, right? Yes. It's the cheesiest scene because it is pretty cheesy. I'm pretty sure microwaves don't work if you just do that. And I definitely know that your head doesn't explode if you use them as well. But that all takes place in this scene. Not if you modify How it How do you bit. know that definitely? I don't, I'm just assuming. But, um... <laughs> I have no proof for this. It's, it's the scene. Uh, it's a show, I should say. But um, in that movie, though, I was like, you know what? If if somebody did something to my daughter, this is this would be on the table. Like this oh, would yeah. be an option. You know what I mean? And this movie, to me, because because he's a plastic surgeon, because he's got this estate that apparently has some uh, uh, um, illegal operating, operating room, room yeah, in the yeah, basement. Clinic, and, yeah. You know all this stuff. It totally makes sense that he would he would use every. You know, um, every tool at his at his access to be able to destroy this guy, yeah. And he does to just fantastical levels. Like it just gets better and better and better. And I'm like, man, you really, you really were mad at him. Like you were, <laughs> like, <laughs> you got him, sir. You know. Yeah. <laughs> now it does go back to the question of whether or not Vicente is actually a bad guy. I mean, he did. She does say stop and everything, and from what we can tell, we we can't actually see penis out of the vagina, vagina at that scene. But it does appear that he stopped. But then he does hit her and knock her out. Right, right. Mm-hmm. now again, going back to the question, I I asked that question because I do think Robert was the bad guy, and I will say that. Do you know why she eventually killed herself, the daughter? Did you guys catch why? Mm, no, not not a hundred percent. Okay, when she wakes up in the in the little vineyard thing outside of the wedding. Who did she wake up to? Oh, her, her dad. Her dad. Her dad. Yeah. She was under the assumption that her dad raped her. Right. 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 Yes. So when she kills herself, it's actually she killed herself out of shame because of uh, because she thought that her dad had raped her. Okay. Right. So Robert is exacting not only his revenge against Vicente for what he perceives to be rape against his daughter, but he's mm-hmm. also exacting his own shame out on Vicente. Because the whole the whole thing, the whole reason why his daughter was killed in the first place was because she was on these psychological, you know, drugs from the psych- from the hospital. Well, she wouldn't have been on those drugs had his had his uh, wife never died. So I mean, all of these feelings, etc., are all going into a lot of this is just based on his own shame. But I thought, I thought there was there was an exchange between him and the psychiatrist, and I I want to funeral um, or before that no before the funeral uh, when when he when when Robert went to go visit her and she. Screamed, got scared, and got to the closet. Yeah, and then then him and the psychiatrist has a has an exchange in the hallway. I'm pretty. I, I have to go watch it again, but I think he says that 
she doesn't recognize you. Well, she says when she sees you, she she says she doesn't recognize you as she thinks that you're the rapist. She yes. thinks you're the rapist. In his the the psychiatrist is trying to let us know that what she believes to have happened is that right. she was is that he raped. Yeah, her. but I don't, I don't think it was going down the path you were just talking about where it's a father daughter rape. Oh, you think well, that she was not connecting with him with her right. being his I, father? I don't, anyway? Yes, that's I, fine. I, I, I can see that. that. I can see that. Yeah. Well, even the, I think the psychiatrist or the doctor even was thinking that okay, is she actually telling the truth? No, I don't think he believed it. If he believed it at all, Robert would have been in jail. It, it just looked right. like it just. I don't know. It sounded like because he wanted her home, and he was like, yes. "Are you sure that's a good idea?" Yeah. And you know, I was thinking that you know the psychiatrist or, or uh, he was saying something like. Uh, are you sure you? I don't. I don't really feel comfortable with that. Yeah. Well, he not just because him. of like the schizophrenia or anything. Yeah. But the psychiatrist questions. The psychiatrist questions Robert and starts to throw the blame that way. <clears throat> and he was like, I, "I chased away the guy who who raped her. I saw the rapist leave. Yeah. So he's already like kind of pushed aside the guilt of yeah. uh, like the guilt off of himself. He right. doesn't let go of the shame or the the personal guilt that he has. But in terms of he could have possibly been the rapist. That's not even on the table for the psychiatrist, I don't think. But what the psychiatrist does do is flip it around on him. He's like, well, I didn't even want her to leave. You wanted to take her to a wedding. Like, pfft, this is all on you. Like, wow. Yeah. I'm surprised the psychiatrist didn't end up on a table. Right. Like, <laughs> Jesus. Right. Or in the grave. Vera, meet your sister. <laughs> you know, like, good Lord. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's extreme in that, in Dr. that regard. I just a bargain. I change everybody. Yeah. God. <laughs> everybody the, that i meet the frankenstein element of this by the way is extreme man because you have uh, the the inventor the uh <laughs> the mad scientist whose creation ends up just you know wanting to destroy him wanting right. to destroy right. the creator i mean the, it's just so it's so frankenstein and he's eventually destroyed by himself by his own creation wants yeah. And crea- and, yeah. well and yeah his own guilt for the whole situation i mean it's basically a modern day frankenstein told as a revenge story told as a bunch of it's just nuts yeah i mean it, it was interesting it's a it's it's a two-hour movie and i i gotta say it did not feel like two hours no i know it, that's it, crazy, it, right? it moves well pretty to quickly. me it did feel a little long really yeah oh, really Whew. the only parts i thought were long were um whenever they were recounting what happened to the mom okay you know what i'm not even gonna say that i didn't feel like anything was long and i know why i didn't because it it constantly feels like you're being unveiled something like it feels mm-hmm. like a series of of like you know um, like little a little rabbit out of the hat. So yeah, or, or little like you know every, like sheets being pulled off of furniture. You're like, what's yeah. under here? Oh, what's what's under? Oh, what's under? Oh, like the whole <laughs> the whole movie. You're like, oh, no, oh shit, put the sheet back. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, vagina plastic. No, <laughs> yeah, spacers. Oh yeah, god. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It gets uh, gets a little raw. Um, well, and I got <laughs> lost. I got lost in the. In the movie, I got caught up in the movie yeah. so much so that I didn't realize it, but I wasn't reading the subtitles. Yep, that happened anymore. to me. Oh, really? That and happened I'm like, to me a couple and times. I'm like, oh, what, uh, let me rewind that because I totally missed all the dialogue in the last five minutes. Yeah, when she so. slits her throat, when Vera slits her throat in the living room. Yeah, um, it's so hard for me to read the read the dialogue in that scene. Cause like it's there's so much action going on. He's got that big mm-hmm. ass deadbolt on the on the front door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the it's remote like, deadbolt. Yeah, yeah. he's like click click. <laughs> Good lord, <laughs> you know he's coming down the stairs and she's so like she's so um God what's the word animated and just like so pissed and she's you know ah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill you and he's like you know that's fine I have a gun no you won't right and she's like well I'll I'll kill myself and he's like he's like you wouldn't then, dare you yeah. wouldn't dare do that you know that that kind of thing it's just so mesmerizing and then when you actually watch her slow slow motion slit her own throat it it's I don't know it just it it wraps you up in that it. did and catch me by surprise because typically when when people in movies do that they're yeah. like oh you know they and they dropped a knife or something like that no but she's full it, on just full on yeah, i didn't expect yeah. her to do it yeah, yeah i didn't either i was like whoa okay this guy's serious yeah, yeah. And, and then then, it, then antonio mm-hmm. robert he quickly goes over and, and it, it saves it's, her. Yeah, yeah he saves her by her yeah, redoing her throat or whatever yeah he sutures her up and then uh and then since he is making skin for her anyway he just applies some new skin and he, <laughs> There we go. Like, I mean, it's it's really kind of a crazy movie. Yeah, and I then, guess she didn't do any internal damage. I guess, right? It, no, it was shallow. Yeah, yeah. But um, that's the other thing is that there's a whole other story to this <laughs> with the with the skin, where um, you know, he's making this experimental skin, and and all of the everything he's doing is un- unethical. Like he would yes. be, you know, he would lose his license as a doctor, 
And when he goes to the the um, college uh, dean or, or president or whatever, his and, TED talk. Yeah, yes, and he's TED like, talk. but he but he's talking to the to the I think it's the university president or somebody. And yeah. the guy's like, um, you know, just so you know, you can't do this. Like you're describing um, what is it, transgenesis? Yeah, he says trans- transgenesis. Gen- he, he's like, you can't do that. And he's like, and the only way you would know about what you're talking about is if you had already done this with a human, which I know you didn't do. And he's like, come on, we do this, you know. And blah blah. It's such a like. There's this whole other movie that's taking place in that scene where you're kind of like. Well, shit, is he gonna is he gonna get caught right now? Like, I mean, what's what could possibly happen here? I found myself in, enveloped in that story, and it only lasts like eight minutes of the whole movie. Like, well, it does it does come back there. though towards the end when you know uh, Fulgencio. Yeah, yeah, Fulgencio he, he tries comes, to tell him. Yeah. yeah, he comes back and he's like, "Hey, look, this is the actual person that we yep. falsified all these papers with." Yep. Like, um, I don't want to be a part of this. Which is when with that picture in the newspaper, that's what breaks Vera's spell. Right. Yes. yes. When she yep. sees herself as Vicente and then she like kisses him goodbye and all that kind of stuff, that's what breaks the spell with Robert. Yes. Right. Because I do believe she started to pseudo fall for Robert to the yes. point where she was like, Well, fuck it. This is my life now. I guess it could be worse. I get railed by this crazy guy and I live in a mansion. Could be worse. I mean if you constantly look at yourself in a mirror for six years, yeah, however you see long a it woman, is, you just see yeah. you, not you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when she saw a picture of, of him, it, it it triggered it triggered her. Yeah. Triggered her. And then uh okay, and one other critique her hiding under the bed and shooting Marilia. That was that was weird. That's probably the the most comical that aspect of that. I was like, ah, eh, <laughs> not a great way to do that. I, I think I screamed blind shot. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it, I was, could, it was a perfect heart shot too. <laughs> yeah. But I could deal with that. I, it's whatever. I mean, it, yeah. it wasn't a great thing, but it was in the grand scheme of that movie. I, I don't think you know that what takes looked, me out. What was it. funny as I thought, I literally thought that the pistol was a paintball gun. Really? Yes. Because the shot that, uh, Vera, uh, did mm-hmm. to Antonio or R- Robert, it looked like he got shot with a paintball. Like it splattered. Yeah, it, yeah. it's it's it just splat- looked fake, just like a, a paintball. Well, it's got to be hard to do to do. Um, what are those called? Squibs. Squibs. Squibs on a on a, Squib. on a flat. Yeah, yeah squib on okay. a on, on a, a bare uh, chest, bare chest yeah. naked guy. That that can't be the easiest to to also blend and hide yeah. and all that stuff. And this movie was, I guarantee you, this movie did not have a huge budget. There's yeah. no way this movie was made. But with I a huge for budget. for a split second, I know they 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 cut away from it really quick which yeah that's understandable if it actually was a paintball gun yes you know yeah it's red or something like that and plus with him hanging off the side of the bed with a blood pile or a blood spot it's huge yeah. like maybe a foot away from his actual he, it's like he didn't get shot in the head <laughs> right you know yeah. he got shot in the chest and it's yeah. like the mattress should be soaked or you know not the floor like right yeah. next to him but anyway hmm. um but i literally thought for maybe just a split second that that gun that he hid in the in the drawer wasn't real. Wasn't real. Was a paintball gun. It was that a paintball would be gun. Really funny. Or BB. Well, it'd be one more. <laughs> it'd be one more way of him like sort of outthinking Vera. Right. Yeah. That would of, be really of going. Funny. I know that you know that I have a gun in this desk. Yep. All right. So I'm going to actually change it out with a paintball gun just to see if he use it on me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or no bullets yeah. in it. Yeah. Or, or no bullets. Yeah. The no bullet thing in particular. That's that's done. In I a thought lot that of movies. was going to happen when she and see, that's broke the thing. into the door. That's done in so many movies that there's stuff that's done in this movie that's that are that's not done. That I'm like, oh, like the slitting of the throat thing. So yeah. many times you see yeah. the person be like, oh, fine, I guess I okay. give up. This bitch is like, nope, nope, fuck it, fine, <laughs> just cuts her own throat. <laughs> Um, you know, same thing with, with going after Antonio Banderas, like so many times, I mean, this movie could have easily gone the way of Vera just lives her life. The rest of the, like just gives up and just lives her life mansion, yeah. just li- lives in, we see a fade out, right. A yeah, really boring, right. Really boring fade out of, um, you know, her looking at herself in a mirror or some shit and the skin I live in, you know, yeah, yeah, credits. Yeah. And well, it's it, like, Oh it God. It kind of ended that way with, uh, with, you know, Vera going back to the shop. See what I think's great. What I think's great about that. Is that the shop assistant is a lesbian? Right, right. So now, technically, <laughs> they can make it work. Those two right. can get together. <laughs> and exactly. this story makes sense. Yes. Yeah, because because uh, not Vincent, but uh, Vicente, Vicente, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, he's hitting on her. He in the was beginning. Yeah. He was just like, "Are you yeah. sure you don't want to change sides?" You yeah. know, type thing. <laughs> and she's like, "No, not at all." That's the skin I live in. Part two. Part two. Uh, Vicente's revenge. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> Does he try to transition back to a male? No. no if she, but then they couldn't be together. But no, that the mm-hmm. ending in particular. It feels a little stunted because yeah, yeah. because they do this like weird um, I'm Vicente thing to the mom, but I don't think I, I don't feel like they needed to end it any other way. Like it it ends up with this. I mean, you know that she's going to go through 
emotions and shock and screaming. Yeah, yeah, right. That's a whole nother movie. I think I think it it I think it, well it ties it all together. Yes. Of going, okay, the mom wasn't actually wrong in saying that her son is still alive. That's right? true. She yeah, actually says kidnapped to the yes. cop. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it proves that yes, he was kidnapped and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, it, it's kind of like a, a closure. Yeah, right. of a sense, you yeah. know, I, I get that round, you know, full circle. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it would have been cooler if she was walking out on the driveway, and that's when it faded to black. Walking out on the driveway, you're talking about uh, oh, Vera. leaving Robert's house, Le- the, leaving Robert's house after after she shot him. See, but I like the idea because so open ended, kind of, kind of. Well, see, that's the thing because the mom is going to the police <clears throat> station and is, is has not giving up on Vicente and all that stuff. You know, at least somewhat. Now, granted, that was like five years before, but at least we saw that she did still care. Yeah, I th- I like that that we go back to the store to know he didn't just like become a, a homicidal maniac and give up on life. Like he he's <laughs> like I escaped. I just escaped. You know, they did some horrible shit to me, so clearly. And uh, and then he goes through, like, you know, last time we spoke to the assistant, he's like, last time we spoke, we talked about this dress. You told me I should wear it. I mean, one after the other, he's like, and we were alone. There's no way I could lie to you about this. And just the shock on her face. And then the mom comes out, and she's like, yeah, you know, what's going on here? They both are crying a little bit. Yeah. And she's like, you know, I'm Vicente. It it just, it. I think it's a good ending, because if they went any yeah. further than that, <laughs> You end up dragged. With, you yeah you're like oh shit now we got to go through the mom experiencing things and oh the cops are gonna show up and there's gonna be like you know we're gonna we're gonna fade out on on the sirens. lights on sirens yeah. and lights on the we don't yeah, need that on a jib shot moving yeah, up yeah, yeah I mean Jesus and then uh, I think if they had ended any earlier than that we it'd be so open ended that you're like well so the mom just never knew or like what happened well, with the parent did, did, did well, he ever go back yeah. and see we'll his mom see what 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 I I wanted to compromise I liked the ending don't get me yeah, wrong yeah. but I I think I would have preferred a compromise between Kyle's ending and, Mine? and this ending okay um to where we see Vera on the street out in front of the the shop, the shop but and, never going and in and then we we do the jib shop Okay. The, the the jib shot of of her walk as she's walking into the shop. Yeah, because so we be do felt, see the outside of the shop a few times, yes. so we would know. It's yeah, a little. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it would be a little difficult, but I think you could but, put it pieces together. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I at that point I would go. Oh, now she's she's going yeah. back to her. And yeah. you could infer that yeah, yeah. she's going to tell yeah. them. One all thing and all. I just kind of realized too is that she actually is embracing being a woman now. Right. A little bit. Yeah. Because, I mean, what's the alternative? Because it could have been a smash cut of her leaving the house mm-hmm. after this murder, double homicide type thing. And then maybe like a week later, something like that. And, you know, it's, you know, cut the hairs cut off yes. to make it look a little bit more like a boy Wear, wearing jeans, he's wearing not, Robert's clothes. Yeah, he's not, he's not wearing a dress. He's actually wearing, or, you know, it's, he's trying to become a man again yeah. or something like that. He's not really excited about being a woman. So he's trying to, basically change himself uh physically or yeah. like uh on Superficial. the outside with your clothes yeah. Yeah. Super, yeah yeah so i mean it it could have ended that way yeah. but you know i i guess being a woman is now it's like it's pretty much you now so deal with it live with it you know yeah well i think if, it. i think if he had been able to go back at all i think it would have watered down the um evilness of robert ludgard yeah. I think if he'd been able to undo it uh, even a little bit, I, sure. I don't think that the impact of, of Robert Ludgard's uh, anger being taken out on Vicente the way that it was, I don't think that would have been as impactful. Because it's not just physical stuff. I mean, oh, it, no, he, it changed it changed vocal cords. Yeah, all yeah, that kind of, kind of like hormone treatment. I yeah, guess. that's that. I didn't understand that. I guess. Yeah, I just inferred it was hormone treatment. Yeah, that's well, what I've envisioned it as. So I don't think that he was put on hormone treatment. I don't think he was. Fulgencio makes a comment that um, now, granted, this is at the beginning of the whole process. This is whenever they're first doing the the, the vaginoplasty. Yeah. Um, but he says later on in the movie, he says, you know, I thought it was strange. Uh, he was already knocked out. He hadn't been on hormones, and you're telling us that you know he wants this this surgery. Um, I don't think he ever put him on hormones. I think what it was is um, he is the skin is is sort of suppressing any um, hair growth or anything like that. And I think he just worked on his, on his uh, vocal cords. I think he just snipped and pinned together whatever he needed to pin together. I don't know. I can't, I think that part is maybe just accepting a little bit of, of suspending the disbelief because yeah. we never see any pills. Right. Yeah. We never see any medications. It appears that he did this, did this transition 
sans any pharma- pharmaceuticals. We, we do. We, we do. We yes. do. What right, pharmaceuticals? Do we right sell? at the beginning, um, Malia. Oh, uh, Marilia. But Marilia. She makes orange juice. Is making is making her breakfast. Oh, oh yeah. and she's putting yeah. stuff she in. Put a pill she's in there. Stuff in oh, there. It was hormones. I yep. forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. That's good right. call. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I didn't then, realize that's what it was until just now. Yeah, so then, I didn't either. So then we have to assume that now that Vicente is not getting those hormones, he's going to start sounding like this. Yeah. Like, Hi. Do so, you like my breasts? <laughs> <laughs> I am not a woman. Yes. I, I did like the ending. Um, I, I think I told Kyle the, after I finished watching it, um, I had to go to the bathroom and I was like, oh, whew. There you are, little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where the show got awkward, right? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Um, um, but but I will yeah. say that the uh, that um, I, I was looking up the awards and and stuff. Oh, did with, you? Yeah. Okay. And, and I mean, the, the two that really that stood out to me was it won the uh, the BAFTA for best film, which which is it won the BAFTA for best film not in the English language. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. You could see yeah. that. Yeah. And it won the uh, Saturn Award for best international film. Yeah. Nice. Okay. okay. So. The fact that this isn't in English, um, I like I watch subtitle movies all the time. That doesn't bother me. This one especially doesn't bother me because there's a, there's dialogue. There's a pretty good amount of dialogue, but it's yeah. not. It doesn't feel um, strenuous. It doesn't no. feel like you're no. reading yeah, and reading and me. reading. Yeah. yeah, but some movies like you read so much that you feel like you're just like I just fucking read the book. Like there's no point, you know what I mean? But this one yeah. didn't feel that way, and it had a good pace. Mm-hmm. I think that really helped. The pacing is. For as slow as this movie is, because if you think about it, it is fairly slow. It feels like it's racing. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm going through a transition or something. Like it feels <laughs> like you're just rushing through this this story. But it, you know, there's well, a we, lot there. Well, we talked a little bit about budget earlier. Um, Kyle, yeah. do you have yes. numbers? Yes, I do. Uh, they're in euros, but I made the uh, actual conversion. You made so. the transition. So yes. what are we what are we guessing? <laughs> the uh, conversion in dollars. In dollars, yeah. dollars. in okay. U.S. dollars. Go ahead. So this Justin. this is budget, right? Yep, budget estimated, obviously. Uh, I, I'm with you. I, I feel like this is probably like a low budget. I do. Thing. I, I think so. Uh, I'll twelve. Okay, million. That's a good guess. All right. I'm gonna go with eighteen. Eighteen. I'm gonna go above that, and I'm gonna go twenty-two, Bob. Twenty-two million, Bob. Um. Yeah, Justin's closest by like really close. It was eleven point eight million dollars. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, nice, nice. Oh wow, uh, I, I thought it was low or, or uh, ten million euros. Wow. I didn't yeah, mean no. to say lowballing. No, it's fine. Um, I think <laughs> I think Antonio Banderas picked this up. That was funny though. I think I think this is one of no those. Balling. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is one of those where he uh, he picked it up for. Um, I think he liked the script. And he decided, you know what, I can really bring this to life in a way that... Because, I mean, he's done a couple of movies where he's the bad guy. Yeah. I'm trying to think of that one really famous one that he did that was... Um, where he's... Where it's almost the same. It's a it's a stalker story. I can't remember the name of it all of a sudden. But um, but he does that every once in a while. I think he plays a damn good bad guy. This one's even better because I, I stopped thinking it was Antonio Banderas. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've, I've seen this movie probably... I don't know, like eight times, something like that. And I still, every time I watch it, I'm like, it's just really, it's really good. And and certain things are really strange about it, like the giant video screen and stuff like that that he has. It's completely laughable in, in terms of size. It's like right. a 70, it's bigger than that. It's Larger probably, than that. It's yeah. probably like 16 it's like feet. Yeah, it's like 16 feet across. <laughs> it's it's kind of joke. It's, it's kind of a joke, but it's necessary for that image of like him, not just, owning this person but like you know the curves of her body and all that kind of stuff like he's he's fully surveying what he's done right yeah. you know what i mean and it's just an engulfing marveling picture. in his creation yeah, yeah. Well, well and and to show you the difference between the book like that was very stylized poetic yes. and stylized what yeah. you just said the book no nay nay oh really no no <laughs> no the the book the the screen is there as well but also in the book the uh the character's name is actually Richard, not not uh, Robert. Oh, okay, oh, but uh, but Richard actually takes the Vera character mm-hmm. out and parades her out at parties and, oh, and wow. things like that. Yeah, and then after these parties, he pays men to rape her. To rape her. Jesus Jeez. Christ! Wow. Oh, and so he, I was actually and, closer and to he my. Watches, yeah. and he watches on the big on the on his screen. Dear in his room. God. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's tiny, man. The 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 movie is like is, is like the book. Light. Light. Yeah. Wow. I got to be honest, though. I'm still back to hell of a revenge story. Like, if you want to get back at your, your daughter's rapist, that's a good way to do it. Right. Well, you know? and since this was a foreign film, uh, the opening weekend USA was not that hot. Oh, I'm going to guess less than 100 grand. Okay. What do you think, John? Yeah, 85 <laughs> 
thousand. Eighty five thousand. Okay. Uh, man. Uh, okay. I'll split the hairs. Ninety thousand. <laughs> I'm gonna say a hundred still. Go okay. Ahead. It was. It was a uh, a little higher than that, but it was a whopping two hundred and twenty three thousand dollars. Really? Oh, That's really? Way, well, obviously, way more than I thought. <laughs> yeah. But then the cumulative worldwide gross of this film. Now, granted, the estimated budget was around eleven point eight million. The worldwide gross for this movie. No, I, I, will, I will say this: in addition to those, uh, those, those two awards I mentioned, it was nominated for something like forty, four, forty-five total? different awards total. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go higher. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay with my twenty-two million. Okay, I'm gonna stay with that. Um, oh, uh, forty million. Okay, sixty million. Uh, Justin was closest at thirty-three point six million. Thirty-three. Yeah. Huh. Uh-huh. So they tripled their money yeah basically actually, you it and i were good. you and i were exactly the same amount away oh really because you he said, said 44 i said 22 i thought you said 40 i said 40 he oh, said, you said 40, 40? Yeah. my fault my fault so i was gonna say that's kind of funny it's 11 million up and 11 uh, million 6. back. 6.4 million away yeah huh interesting um yeah. well i got the rotten tomato scores up too here Ooh. um so what do you guys think that the critics scored this i would say like the critics score would be pretty high um, yeah me too I'm, I'm gonna say probably like 82 percent 82 John? 85. Good guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go 87. 81. Damn. Wow. You got it almost. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So, um, it, it figured that's, I mean, it's a very artistic film. For it is. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, it's complicated. And, yeah. Yeah. It's everything that a critic likes. Well, not complicated, this is, but. This is, no, it is. You know what and I mean? This is the kind of, the, you ask me all the time, like, what, what is something I would like? This is the kind of movie I like. Something that's interesting, cerebral. Still has a like an in, like a, a fast paced somewhat story to where I don't feel like I'm watching the the remains of the day. Mm-hmm. Like oh hello I, I didn't know you were in here. Are you, <laughs> is that tea? <laughs> it's so interesting. <laughs> when I was growing up, my mother made tea. Oh my fucking god! Right. I can't even. I can't. <laughs> yeah. They talk about tea for four and a half hours. No thank you. Um, um, what do ahead. you think the audience scored this? Ooh, so I'm gonna Ooh. say somewhat close actually. Go ahead. <laughs> Seventy six. Seventy uh, six. I'll I'll go eighty. I'm gonna say 84. 84 on the dot. Damn. Wow, nice. nice. Yeah. Not that. So just guess. slightly higher than the critics. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna guess 81. I was like, ah, it's gotta be, it's right around that. But yeah, hmm. nice. Yeah. Interesting. Well, so since we found out what the Rotten Tomatoes, Eddie, go ahead and uh, what your score? Bestow us your score for this movie. I can't ask you guys to go first, huh? No, no, no it's you. Damn it. Um, you can't tailor your score based off of ours. No, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want my score to impact you guys. No, um, it won't. No. I'm going to say this movie's an eight. Wow. This movie's an eight. Yeah. Okay. I really it, like this movie. Well, again, it's it's not simple. It's no, not, I, I was just making a joke just because you, you said last episode, it's like, and that's a movie I like. Yeah. And well, you gave it a 6.5 <laughs> or yeah, 6.2 or something. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and that's the thing is like, look, like The Color of Money is a great example. The Color of Money is a good movie. It's fun to watch. But I don't walk out of it going, oh, it was mind-blowing. But it's well, not layered like this. Not at all. Yeah, yeah. it's very one-dimensional compared to this. And that's the thing. And that's something like this is what I is what I lend toward. In fact, I'm going to address my score just a little bit. I'm going to go 8.2. 8.2. Yeah, okay. because I'm, wow. I'm, the more I think about it, yeah, it's, 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 I would watch it today. As fucked up as it is and as crazy as it is and as uh, the, the spacer, dildo spacers and the, the <laughs> vagina plasty and all that, I would watch it again today because it's all really included. shocking. Yeah. Dr. Right. Scholl's spacers. Yep. Ew. Gross. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, Kyle. With that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I pretty much laid it all out on this podcast, but, you know, with the with the score, I'm, I'm actually like a 7.7 7 on this on this movie. All right, so it calls a seven point seven. By the way, this yeah. is the first time I'm not the lowest score, right here. That's true. That's true. Yeah, even on my own movies, <laughs> you, you don't know what Justin and I are gonna. That's true. <laughs> no, no, but I'm saying ju- he's well, lower. I, yeah, I'm, I'm already lower than him, so oh, he's, he's obviously yeah, not yeah, the yeah. lowest. No, I can't be the lowest yeah. if Kyle's already lower. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> no, um, I really enjoyed it. Um, it, it kept me on the edges. It, like I was eating popcorn while I was watching the movie. You know that uh, Michael Jackson gif of him eating popcorn in theater. <laughs> yes, That's yeah. how I was with this movie. Oh wow! Did you end up at one point with like a, a like a handful in your hand, but realize you hadn't put it in your mouth? No. See, I've had that happen before, only once or twice. But I've had it to where like I'd be eating popcorn in a movie, 
and go to put it in my mouth and something would happen and I'm so like just in rapture and you would just and what's be, taking, keep holding it I'm just holding popcorn in my hands like midair <laughs> that's yeah. hilarious no I'm fat I don't forget about popcorn <laughs> in my hands um, if you do you'd be like then it's... then why am I living yeah exactly <laughs> um, but no I, I really enjoyed it um, it, it was entertaining. I would recommend it to uh, somebody who I know that that would like this type of movie. Well, if you're into like mystery thrillers, mm-hmm. um, psychological shit, like something that or or revenge stories, like really good, like uh, nowhere near the same type of movie. But um, what's the name of the? There's a series. Uh, girl gets raped in the woods and she kills all of her rapists. What's the name of the? Movie? I spit on your grave. Oh, it's yeah. it's nowhere near the same type of movie. But I spit on your grave is a really good revenge story. And there's a series of them, and they get like the level of depravity gets worse and worse through each movie. Hmm. And it's one of those where it's just satisfying. Like, I like seeing bad guys get it in the end. And in this movie, they got it in the end. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I'll see you at the movie. <laughs> I was about to say, I, 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 all the double entendres on this episode is pretty great, right? In fact, I'm going to give another one. I'm going to give this a solid eight. Nice. Solid eight. Okay. Yeah, nice. All right. John. Okay, so, um, Roger Ebert. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. About him. Right. Um, he gave it three stars out of his five. Okay. And he says, uh, though I usually take pleasure in... Revenge stories? No. Uh, how do you say the, the director's last name? Oh, Amaldivar. Amaldivar. Oh. Though I usually take pleasure in Amaldivar's <laughs> sexy darkness, this film induces queasiness. <laughs> <laughs> this film must yeah. be credited with expressing exactly what Amaldivar wanted to say but I am not sure I wanted to hear it. The three-star rating is a compromise between admiration for the craftsmanship and the acting and disgust about the story. <laughs> yeah. So I could see that. Yeah. Really th- so, but now my thoughts, this, you almost you almost beat me to it here, oh, really? Eddie, earlier. Yeah, my thoughts, this was like Quentin Tarantino, Robert, Robert Rodriguez, and Rob Zombie had a baby that was adopted by Mary Shelley. Mm, okay. That's that's the feeling that I got. That's actually kind of a yeah. okay. I could see that. That's a good mashup. And uh, <laughs> despite despite the film's disturbing story, I did like it. Mm-hmm. The filmmaking, I think, was second to none. I think I think it was a great uh, directed phenomenally. I think it uh, it uh, the, the cinematography was was spot on. I was going to ask, what did you guys think of the cinematography? But yeah, I, I think it's great. I, right? I, yeah. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. see anything jarring at all. Um, Banderas' performance was okay. Okay. I mean, I, I did get lost that, that, that it was him, but I, I've definitely seen him in, in better roles. Um, Elena Anya, mm-hmm. phenomenal. I thought she, I thought she did very well. Um, and as I said, the guy who played Zika totally freaked me out. It was a serious <laughs> part of the film. Yeah, he was pretty, pretty um, scary. It was a complete mind trip from uh, beginning to end. Latina. And uh, it held my attention, unlike most foreign films. Oh, nice! And uh, so I'm going to give it a eight point two. So 8. same as 2. same as I do. Nice. So with that, then that means that the skin I live in comes into a solid eight. Solid eight. Yep. Okay. Well, nice. I think that's the highest scoring film that we have. It is. I think the highest one is. Um, Was it it's a tie between. Me? No, it's a tie oh, between. Uh, the Color of Money and Big Hero Six at seven point six. Oh, interesting. Oh, nice. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. This this actually came out to eight point zero two five. So I'm just gonna rule it. Yeah, as an eight. eight. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a yeah. good solid eight. And I would agree with that. I think that the movie overall is. Um, I mean, it's not perfect, and and the subject matter would make it hard for some people to get past. But yeah, I don't know. I I think I think to to minimize this is calling it like a transsexual story is. It's way too minimal. Like there's too many, there's yes. too many other things happening to call it a uh, to call it a transsexual story, but to also just call it like a simple revenge story completely disregards that the that the mad scientist ends up falling in love with his own creation. You yeah. know what I mean? And that basically his downfall is brought about by himself. Yeah. Like that's you know that's that's really hard to ignore. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, realistically, by the way, I just wanted to say this: um, had he let his wife die, just die. At the at the car accident, none of this movie would have happened. Right, his own love for her 
damned his entire uh, his family, his mother, his, his brother, his bro- his, his everything, mom. everything fell yeah. apart. His his daughter killed herself, etc. Everything falls apart because he can't come to terms with letting her go. Right, it's yeah. fucking yeah. tragedy. That's a, that's a tragic. It's a tragic movie in that way. So, well, that was a good pick for Wild Card, Eddie. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. Yeah, good job. Um, so the only thing we got to do left is pick the movie that we're going to watch this week um and pick and, a person well, well yeah that's right picked a person we're all yeah. back up in the running here yes, yes we yep. are all four of us and this is the last round yes it is we only have four genres left yeah okay here we go and the victim skin i live in too oh god <laughs> <laughs> kyle it's me oh no the it, devil's reign it, too it, yes <laughs> electric boogaloo <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> So let's right. spin for his genre. And here we go. All right. Western. You think? I'm, ca- I'm calling it Western. I think romance. After this movie. <laughs> romance. Oh, good call. Well, hot damn. Okay, so I got a I got a pretty uh, decent one. Um, I actually just watched this movie not too long ago um, with my wife, and this is probably her most favorite movie. Uh, almost, well, not really most favorite, but it's pretty up there. Okay. But it is a very good uh, movie. It's called Brooklyn. And it's got uh, Saoirse Ronan, uh, Emery Cohen, and Donald Gleeson, um, one of the the dudes from Harry Potter. Mm. Um, what year was it? Uh, 2015. Okay. Uh, so basically, it's an Irish immigrant lands in 1950s Brooklyn, where she quickly falls into a romance with or uh, into romance with a local. Uh, when her past catches up with her, however, she must choose between two countries. And the lives that exist within. Okay. So it's basically like a, do I pick this person or this person type thing. So Gotcha. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of Screen Riot. Um, make sure you go to our website, AmericanPodcasting.net. Uh, check out our other shows there. Also go to our Patreon. Uh, and make sure you go to realgood.com. That's R-E-E-L. And look up uh, Brooklyn so you can catch the movie and watch it before you listen to the podcast for next week. And with that, uh, I think we're out of here. Thanks, guys. All right. See you. See you. Later. If you're enjoying the podcast, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. To get in touch with us or to submit show ideas, email us at contact at AmericanPodcasting.net. That email again is contact at AmericanPodcasting.net. Thanks for listening. We're not experts, nor do we claim to be. The views and opinions are ours and ours alone. They in no way reflect the views of any other persons, entities, or our sponsors.